everybody. It's your girl, Chloe Chloe, and y'all know what it is. You are live in the chat room. And before we get started, you guys know what to do. Tell your friends, mama, daddy, brothers, uncles, dogs, pets, whatever, that they need to turn in right now to hmsnetradio.org because we're about to get into a great conversation as we do every week. Follow us on social media, Instagram at the.chat.room, the website. Join in the conversation with us at thechatroomradio.com because it's going to get hot. I missed you guys last week. Last week, I, I what? I talked to my mom, and this week, I got my boy Demond from the 504 in the building with me. All day, baby. Demond <laughs> uh, Soul Alvarez, uh, author of uh, Soul of a Man. Yes, I got the author of Soul of a Man. I wanted to get intellectual with you guys this week, and... um. Demont has wrote this book. It's kind of like poetry, isn't it? From the from what I've read, it's it's poetry. Yeah this this book is uh this book is I, I call it my actual mixtape. The way the way I actually put this book together, I put it together like the way a baby face would would put together a uh put together a like a. a an, an album. album. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll put together an album, and 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 in this you you get. A lot of topics on love. You get a lot of topics on uh, get a lot of topics on race. You get a, a lot of topics on uh, self esteem. I touch on uh, I touch on abortion. I touch on uh, just life itself. So you get you get a lot of perspectives, but you get perspectives from uh, the depths of the soul of a man. Why? Why did you decide to write this book at this point in your life? At this point in my life, I, it's 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 a mentality of uh, it's a mentality of now or never. You know, uh, it's like one one day at a time, one step at a time. Now, I'm at that point where um, yeah, it's like I find myself uh, in my 30s back in school, and I never would have thought that. And I find myself, you know, people have told me to write a book for years. I've been writing since like the 90s. You know, growing up, uh, growing up in New Orleans, growing up around. Uh, jazz music and and all of that great culture. So that culture has cultivated me through uh, through poetry. But I am a but I am a creative writer. Mm. So that's that's the main thing that that made me want to uh, that made me want to write this book. I want to be able to uh, I would definitely want to be able to just inspire people. I want people to just to have a, a sense of uh, deeper self, especially the, uh, the the sisters and brothers out there. You know, the I know sisters they, and brothers. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this book is for the sisters and brothers. It's not just for a man, because you did title it Soul of a Man. But by man, you mean just... So yeah, when, when I say soul of a man, it is my uh, it is my uh, perspective uh, on on different topics in in life itself. So that's where the the soul of a man comes from. Now the the book is uh, the book is very deep and it's in depth, and there's a uh, there's a little bit of of everything in the book for everybody. Hmm. So I know you said in the book you talk on love, life, abortion, marriage. Let's start with love. We're always talking about love on the chat room. Of Y'all course, know how I feel course, about love. Of course, of it's course. a you hate it or love it type of thing. Of, of what, what's your what's your status on love? Are you single, married? Now I am. Uh, I am currently in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So uh, I know nowadays we live in the love and hip hop era. So when you when you look at shows like that, it's kind of like smoke and mirrors. You don't know if these people are in a relationship. Or if you don't know if they're not in a relationship, so when you when you look at the topic of love, it is so deep. When you look at the ocean, it is so deep. When you look at uh, space itself, like a lot of people go into religion, you know, a lot of people don't like to say, you know, it's not really in God we trust anymore. A lot of people like to say, you know, uh, speak it out into existence, which is true. But a lot of people like to a lot of people like to go into the topic of. You know, well, the universe gave me this. That's kind of like the the new age thing. But I'm kind of old school because I, I'm I believe, very old. I don't yeah, know how believe, these new generations. Yeah, I believe. In yeah, I, you know, I, I still, you know, I still believe in God. Mm-hmm. I believe that uh, if you speak it, if you write it down, if you put it out there, things will start lining up. I mean, hey, look, world, I'm on the Chloe show. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say hi, mom. <laughs> no, so it's. You're you're right. I've kind of felt like, especially my generation, we're we're getting to this point of love where it's just kind of 
it doesn't have meaning anymore. I kind of feel like love has lost its meaning. Marriage has lost its meaning. Relationships have lost their meaning. It's just kind of, it's a title. What do you, in your book, how do you describe love? What is love supposed to be like? Have you ever been in love to be one to write about it? Of course. I mean, I've been in love. I have, there's so many different, uh, there's so many different aspects of love. Mm-hmm. You can have love of self. You can have uh, love for your family. You can have uh, the passions and what you do in life, you know, and, and how you and how you present yourself. And you can have uh, the love for uh, another person, you know, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend or politically correct, you know, girlfriend, girlfriend, you know, however, you know, however, <laughs> however you want yeah, to. How, however that goes nowadays, mm-hmm. you know, but love. Uh, love is a uh, a sense of being. It's a sense of being in in a committed situation. Yes, uh, people, you you actually can still be in. A, you still actually can be in a, a committed relationship with somebody. Now they they say communication is very key. But I think when when people get in in these uh, in these relationships, one maybe they never had like a, a father figure. You know, maybe uh, it was just them and their mom. So, you know, they they know the love of of a mother, but they don't know the love of uh, uh, they don't know the love of of a man. So that's really especially when it comes to men. I, I like how you bring that up. How I know a lot of, you know, men who might who grown up without a dad. It's been them and their mom. How does a man supposed to? How does a man supposed to love if he's never seen a guy love? Or like he's never seen a guy love his mom. How is he supposed to portray that to another woman? How would you talk about that in your book? Um, in this book, I have a uh, I have a piece that actually talks about um, a young lady. She's in a situation with a guy, and she ends up getting pregnant. And she the guy the guy takes off. So she is she's in a situation where uh, it's just her. And her unborn child so she has to look within the depths of herself she has to look within the depths of her soul to say that uh the baby is like you know mommy you know i'm you know mommy i'm here don't kill me you know because mm-hmm. i i um i'm i'm a part of you and you're a part of me even though that guy left we we still have each other is that where you touch on abortion yes that, what are your thoughts on abortion that's why i touch um my my thoughts are you you know, every watching a lot of episodes of, of Law and Order, uh, SVU, you're Law and Order. <laughs> yeah, watching, yeah, yeah, like I've, you know, I've really become like a, a an expert on like a lot, just watching that show. You think you're aging now? I know a lot of people who watch stuff like Law and Order and Grey's Anatomy, they think they're doctors and you know, investigators now, they think they can do it all. I, Is that I, you? Well, I'll say that, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it. It uh it, it opens your mind. I mean, I've I've taken I've taken like I've taken some law classes. I've taken anatomy classes. Mm-hmm. So you know it it uh it it broadens your uh, your repertoire, so to speak, and it and it opens your mind mm-hmm. to uh to a lot of different uh, sensitive topics. You know, because when you talk about when you talk about women and when you talk about uh, abortion, you know, everybody's everybody's it it becomes. It, it's not just uh it, it's it's really a, a life or death uh situation you know when you're talking about trying to tell somebody uh what to do with, with their body and what to what to do with the uh our, our human life you know and i get that some people it's it's a case by case situation like i said it's, it's very it's very sensitive and it's, it's a very 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 uh touchy uh subject but i could never be the one to tell somebody uh Oh well, you're not going to, you know. So, mm-hmm. uh, it's like I don't, I don't have any kids personally, but I have nieces and nephews. You know, I, I love them to death. I really do. But I could never, I could never, uh, I could tell, I could never tell a, a, a woman what to do with her body because it, it's, you know, in a nutshell, it, it's, it's her body. It's, it's herself. Even it, if you're in a situation where you feel like you can't provide, you don't want to be there. You're, you're not for it. And that that brings that brings about a lot of drama with people. I've seen, you know, I've seen the stuff with, you know, child support and it gets messy mm-hmm. and social media escalates it to to a whole nother stratosphere. So my thing with that is if if I had somebody and if they you know, if they're carrying, you know, like our child because mm-hmm. it, it's 
you know, it takes the, you know, the, the sperm and the egg and fertilization. I'm glad you said our, because a yeah. lot of men look at the situation of abortion not, and think that the, yeah, the decision is mainly on the woman. And, and, that's, and that's the thing, you know, it's like the, the, uh, the fa- you know, I know uh, as a as a black male society, there's a lot of things that stacked up against us. But um, now, you know, we we as men, we we really and and you see, you know, you see things in in uh in in communities where where guys are are, are starting to step back up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, it's just the fact that we don't really see a lot of uh, positive images in in uh, in society. You know, it's it's a lot of if you watch uh, stuff on uh, on Facebook, it's a lot of people fighting and robbing. So you don't even want to step outside your door because no. you think somebody you know coming at you with a shotgun. Absolutely, Seriously. absolutely. And it, it's and we talk about social media a lot on here and like entertainment shows and how one can be so deterred and so you know, just looking at that stuff, it's just kind of like, we feel like that's what life is supposed to be, or that's how life is now, based off what these celebrities are doing, or reality stars are doing, or what people are saying on social media, and it's just not the case. I always say that, uh, one of my sayings is that art, art always imitates life, and, mm-hmm. and vice versa. So, when you look at, uh, when you look at things like Hollywood, when you look at things that are on, uh, on YouTube, you know, and especially, uh, VH1 and not not just with black people because you know they their shows about uh, you know you see they're mob wise with the Italians so mm-hmm. there's a sense of ghetto in every culture so you know we just can't we just can't necessarily throw that we we necessarily can't throw that on black people but right. we don't have uh, we don't have uh, positive images like the Cosby Show and a different world like from my generation well you know now they then took Cosby Show off the air because of yeah what yeah, Paul I, Bill I know, going yeah, through. I, I know would, would, yeah I, I know you think that's a smart move though well the guy from uh, there was a guy from 7th Heaven and he you know something happened I think he like molested some kids and mm-hmm. stuff like that and his show still in syndication I now, remember we, reading a tweet about that yeah, yeah now let's you know let's let's if you want to uh, if you will if you want to stack the two together you know you're talking about uh, a woman and a kid, a uh, kid, you know, hasn't really experienced anything yet. You know, kids are supposed to be innocent mm-hmm. in, in life. So, and then you have, uh, then you have grown women who, and, you know, I don't, you know, know the particulars of, you know, I know in Hollywood there was a big party scene and drugs mm-hmm. and, and all of that stuff like that. But um, I think you, you, first of all, let me say, yeah, you should never, uh, you should never for, really want to force anything on anybody. Right. That's that's the that's the key point, you know. But to get back to what I was saying, it's it's the the fact that uh I don't know. I wasn't there with, with Bill Cosby and, and, and his women. And, yeah, you weren't at the stuff. party. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. <laughs> I wasn't at the Playboy Club with Hugh Hefner back in the day when Bill Cosby <laughs> was really hot, you know. Right. I think with uh with, with Bill he said a lot of things about the you know, a lot of things kind of that kind of pushed him aside or pushed him at odds with, with the black community, you know. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people just kind of pointing the finger like, yeah, see, you, you get what you, you you know, you you reap what you sow and you see you, all those crazy things and see what's happening to you now. And, you know, mm-hmm. but I don't know. There was, a, there was a story out about him trying to buy a, a NBC Universal or something like that. And all of a sudden, uh, strangely enough, all of these women just – pop up out of nowhere and and say all of these you know things or you know this happened and that happened but i don't know but they shouldn't have taken the cosby show off you know that that I, show and that's what gets me about the whole dilemma like if he did it he did it if he did it does he deserve to sit in jail yes absolutely whatever the case may be mm-hmm. but to take off his show because like you mentioned it has everything to do with kind of like it was a good black show. It's not us looking at our love and hip hops and basketball wives or our mob wives and seeing people fighting all the time. And that's our perception because that's what the young people are looking at nowadays. It was a good show where a man, a black man was a doctor, black woman was a lawyer and they had children. And it was just a good standard. This is what I should want 
my life to be like and to take that off the air for our children not to see it anymore that's what hurts me that's, yeah, it's because very... my thing is little Rudy and little Theo shouldn't have to suffer for that like they sh- they should still be getting checks off that Bill Cosby exactly because if it was still playing they would still be getting checks yeah, now exactly. they check stop yeah so <laughs> that's what it makes wasn't, me mad yeah so it, it, it wasn't necessarily yeah, like the Cosby show when that came on it was like a a cultural phenomenon like yeah. we, we've never we've never seen uh we've never seen that was like the the first show of its kind and, and we really haven't seen uh anything uh anything like that in a in a serious sense you know even though right. the show was funny it was it was comical and the way they presented it it was it was brilliant and yeah. it did touch on a lot of uh real real world topics you know exactly and a lot of a lot of black people a lot of black people do live like that nowadays you mm-hmm. know a lot of uh like women are, I think women are like the number one group as far as uh, the most educated. I don't know if it's in the country or the world. I think I saw something. Absolutely. Yeah, I Especially saw black women. Shout out to all my black yeah, women out there exactly. that's getting that's that education. I, yeah, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. So, uh, and from that, we could go into so many different <laughs> things. Oh, we could go. I mean, if you, I'm, I'm game for it. Take it there. Are. This is your show. I merely just let, hey, you talk. Okay, so as far as the uh, as far as the educational aspect, me, uh, I always love to learn, and I always I always love to take myself up mm-hmm. to uh, to to another level. Uh, now, as far as uh, when when I was growing up, it was it was like uh, go to you know it was like uh, go to college, get yourself a good job, a nice car in the house, mm-hmm. and and that was it. That's how life was supposed to be. Yeah. Now. It's it's to the fact where I you know I saw I saw the Dr. Dawn show you were on there you mm-hmm. guys were talking about millennials how you're using uh, social media and if you get you know if you get enough likes you can get corporate sponsorships mm-hmm. you can you can get your own shows you can actually become you know there's a guy uh, these these folks that's on YouTube you know, doing these little comedy things and stuff like that getting all of these hits these guys are millionaires right you know and it and it's uh. It's almost, you could say in a sense, it's almost, maybe you could say it's like, you know, a popularity contest or whatever like yeah. that. But this is, the, this is the, like they, like that, I think that song says, welcome to the new day. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's, this is, this is the new day. So you have to be able to, uh, you have to be able to uh, adjust and adapt. Exactly. It, I was just going to say that. Yeah. It's not, it's not uh, anymore. It's not about, uh, it's not just about getting your degree because a lot even when I was in school a lot of people who uh who went to school for computer science and whatever was hot back in the day now that's not hot anymore you know now you have what's hot is you know the medical field I remember meeting a lot of people who are engineers going to school to become engineers these are you know these are the fields nowadays but you know the prices of oil go down so the the companies start cutting back so now what do you do so what are your thoughts on college? You know what? Because we're we, we going to switch it up a little bit because I want to hear what what you would have to say if you were to put this in soul of a man. How would this play? Because I went, as you guys know, I went to the University of Missouri for four years. I did that. I went to college. I did all that. And when I graduated, sometimes I look back and be like, why did I waste all that money going to this huge school for it to be twice as hard to find a job. Because they teach you go to college. You get a job so easy. Go to college. And it's just kind of like, I feel like in this day and age, sometimes you honestly don't have to go to a huge university or college to become successful. What are your thoughts on that? That is absolutely true. I mean, you can actually, I think I heard something where President Obama was trying to make a community, going to community college free. free something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So nowadays you can actually go to, you know, community college or you can go to a trade school. You know, that's exactly what I did. You know, I went to uh, went to uh, Southern University in New Orleans, and then I went to uh, Southern University in Baton Rouge. Shout out to SU, baddest band in the land. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I thought I was going to start some trouble with some people out there, but hey, just wanted to send that shout out. But after I finished my four-year degree, you know, I was like, okay, well, I've got this degree in business administration, so now what do I do with it? You know, try management, try some different jobs. I'm like... Wow, this sucks. You know, I'm working. You know, I can save some money and whatever, whatever. But I'm not happy. So, mm-hmm. you know, went back to school. Uh, went to went back to school for massage therapy. So I'm currently doing that now. Mm-hmm. So I find that to be more. Uh, find that to be more relaxing. I find that to be where I can, I can make more money 
and that's more uh, freedom for me, you know? So You know what's crazy is that I feel like I just had an epiphany, too, when it comes to college. Like, not knocking college. I think everyone should definitely go to school, whether it's community college, trade school, whatever. You definitely yeah, should go somewhere to power. further an education. Knowledge, yeah. Knowledge yeah, but... You see how you went to school, you because you went to school right after high school, mm -hmm. and then you you got you got your degree, you did your job, you hated it. Now you're back at school for something else. Mm -hmm. Do you think someone should wait a couple of years after they graduate high school to figure out what it is that they really want to do, then go get your education in that? Because that kind of triggers a finger too. As soon as you out of high school and you're going into college, a lot of people really don't know what they want to do with their life. They're just kind of like, this is my mom and daddy told me I need to go to school. Society told me I need to go to college. So right after high school, I have to apply and I need to go to college. But it's kind of like a lot of people don't know what am I supposed to do? Like, what, what do I really want to major in? And if I pick this to major in, is this really what I want to do? Do you think someone should wait a couple of years? I think that it, it's, it's, almost like uh take pro sports for for example you know guys who have this monster talent you know the the, the kobe bryant's of the world mm -hmm. the, back in the day the kevin going as these guys were just jumping straight to the pros now they can do that because they had the they had the skill level you know to to actually just go uh go to something that could just take care of them for the rest of their lives everybody doesn't necessarily have that mm -hmm. some people say hey i'm going to some people say hey i'm going to go into the military some people say you know i'm going to you know if you have the option to travel and and see the world do that you can discover so many different things about yourself you know by just uh by just trying so many different things but you uh in in, in a nutshell uh for in a nutshell for somebody just to just to wait i think um uh maybe maybe so because necessarily college isn't necessarily for everybody it's not it's not it it's you know some people don't like to you know some people uh don't like would, that school yeah, they that don't like talk, that yeah yeah they don't like that studying every night you know they I hated wanna... it hated every bit of it <laughs> <laughs> hated every bit of I it i know i still I'm, I'm not gonna tell them lies i have to study and do that stuff nowadays mm. and you know i have to i have to necessarily uh i have to necessarily uh push myself mm -hmm. but life is trial and error exactly. you know yeah. i didn't i didn't discover uh i didn't discover like i can do massage until I was in, uh, I was in, uh, uh, you know, undergrad, mm -hmm. you know, and from undergrad, I didn't know if I wanted to necessarily, you know, I, when I was, uh, took some classes at, uh, Texas Southern and the guy was like, Hey man, you want to jump into this, uh, you want to jump into this, uh, this, this master's program for, mm -hmm. uh, for business. And I'm like, well, you know, I already have this, you know, I already have this bachelor. So, you know, what, what am I going to do with the master's unless I'm trying, unless you, I think if you're trying to climb up into that trying to climb up into that 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 corporate ladder of success then maybe you know if you're trying to maybe uh become a doctor or go into your own private practice right or trying to you know i feel so like if you know that you want to be like a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or some type of successful corporate mm -hmm. businessman then you know that it's good for you to kind of like just jump into college but i feel like a lot of people they go to college right at the high school. I did the same thing, too. Like I said, I'm not knocking it. I don't want nobody quoting me saying, Clo Clo said don't go to college because that's a lie. <laughs> I did not say that. I'm saying that I can understand now why people decide to maybe wait a year or two. Not too long because I feel like if you wait too long, then you get discouraged and you just don't want to go no more. Mm -hmm. But I can understand why people kind of give it some time because you really don't know at what we go into college at 17 18 19 we don't know what we want to do with our lives by then exactly. we just know we're going to college to turn up exactly <laughs> i'm just I know, going for the just, party yeah you, you just know wanna, i'm here yeah. you just want party you just want to go out you just you know you want to get out your mama's house exactly that's why you know that's why uh i think sometimes people should wait you know yeah. people should maybe uh finish high school and go and get a job you know right i mean and i've had cousins that have done that you know i know later many on. people who've done it yeah they picked up a trade and they're doing good in life uh -huh. you know so i mean you don't necessarily have to uh you don't necessarily have to go and get a you know a bachelor's and they say nowadays a bachelor's is just like 
having a uh, having a high school. That's exactly what it is, people. I'm not even gonna lie so to you. So now you know now you that have to, don't mean nothing these days. Yeah, now you have to go and get your masters and mm-hmm. think about okay, cool. I got my masters. Maybe I get another masters, and then maybe I should go ahead and get a doctorate. So you know, yes, education. Yes, education is uh, education is the key to success, but knowledge of self and knowing who you are it's is the going major to, key. Yeah, it's the major key. Mm. And when you talk about uh, when you talk about school and majors, there you go. That that's the word major. Major key <laughs> major in our key. DJ Cali voice. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this, because I know you touch on this a little bit in your book. Let's talk about the evolution of man. You said you're you're in your thirties. Mm-hmm. What what's different about you back when you were younger? in life to what life is now what's different has anything changed is it harder to be a man um based on well i'll i'll talk about uh i'm just gonna get real and just talk about being a that's the only way i'm gonna take it i'm I'm just i'm just gonna get real and then let's just talk about me uh being a black man go ahead in, in society you know you have you have it where now yes black girls rock yes uh uh, you know, black girl magic. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Those are those are those are the trends. Those are uh, the topics. But why uh, why is black people? Why can't we all rock? You mm-hmm. know, why can't we? Why can't we all have magic? You know, if you if you guys don't, you know, I, I'm a lover of history. I love history. I think history tells you directly who you are and who you're descended from. You know, they always say black people. Uh, Kings and queens, but if you don't know that, if you don't know anything about uh, Kemet, if you don't don't, if you don't know anything about uh, Egypt, you know all of these things, or you know you could pick up for those who don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, pick up the Hidden Color series. Uh, just start from Hidden Colors one, and they talk about all this stuff. Go to your local library, Google it. You know. So when you say why can't we all rock, you mean not just black people, but Everyone saying, in the culture. Yeah, now you know. Now it, it's where uh, you know. Now it's where black women are. Now it's where black women are in in the forefront, and mm-hmm. and it's almost like we as uh, it's almost like we as uh, black men we are uh, kind of like behind you guys. But I don't I don't mind you know if you're if you're a female if you're a black female and you're a great leader you mm-hmm. know. My thing is just uh, don't just because we have, you know, we as black people, we do this a lot. You know, we find our success and we, you know, we just it's just all about us. Oh, yeah. Because, we don't you know, help we, each yeah, other. Out. I complain about that all the yeah, time. Yeah, we don't we don't go back into the community. You don't want to talk to the little kids, you know, and they like Whitney Houston said, children are our future. Teach mm-hmm. them well and let them lead the way. Mm-hmm. So, um, like I said, I don't I don't mind. uh being a king standing next to his queen mm-hmm. because that is beautiful. I believe that uh I believe that black love is beautiful. I believe that um just having that uh just having that within your soul is something that's uh that's peaceful and, and peace can lead to prosperity. But do you think it's a problem with black women leading society nine days? Like do you see that as a problem? Like is it a problem that we speak on it too much that black girls rock and you know, we're the leaders of education. Is that an issue? Is that ever an issue for a black man? I don't know. I don't think so because I, I've, I've in in my life. I'm just talking about me personally. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen, uh, I've seen strong role models. You know, uh, going to church. You know, that's where a lot of my, uh, that's where a lot of my soulfulness comes from. You know, mm-hmm. uh, singing in the choir and doing plays in church. You know, just just different things like that. But all of those preachers, you know, all of those preachers were male. And then, you know, you fast forward to the 90s, you start seeing, you know, uh, prophet is this, prophet is that. So the women, you know, start, but, you know, the world, I feel like the word of God can be taught, you know, can be taught by anybody. Absolutely. You know, I saw, I saw a video of a little kid uh, preaching, you know, very inspiring. So I don't, I don't have that. Uh, we've all been called to do something. You know? Right. And if you are, if you are a leader. You have to you have to step up and lead, but you have to step up and lead uh, in the right way. You can't just lead. Uh, you can't just lead one uh, one group or one sex and leave everybody else over there, you know, alienated. That's I where, get what you're saying, but yes. you know, we women we fight for our women. No, 
We love it. I feel like because for so long, we weren't able to do anything as a woman and as a black woman. We we couldn't, we weren't allowed the opportunity to have certain type of jobs or do certain type of things. I mean, I feel like we still don't, but we're finding a way around those loopholes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where black women are kind of thriving right now. But I get your point. I think that we can do better with helping, you know, our black men up as well. But how, how do we do that? You know, is it a black woman problem or is it a society problem? Because I, I feel like at the same time, society is not going to let us all eat at the same time, if you get my drift. Like, it's not going to be too many of us that's going to all eat at the same time. There's, I feel like there's enough out there for everybody. It's not, uh, it's, not just, uh, it's not just in your town. It's not just in your state. It's not just in your continent, the United States. Mm -hmm. it's, it's global. So you have to, you have to be able to, you have to nowadays be able to find a way to just be all inclusive. You know, like y'all, y'all talked on Dr. Dawn's show about uh, just having, just having an open mind, like always looking for the next hustle. Yeah. So that's, that's exactly, that's exactly how you have to have that mindset. You know, if uh, like, you, you know, you have a show, I'm your intern, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not mad at you. For having your own show, I'm here. I'm here to learn to uh, to get that knowledge. I'm just happy that there's somebody, me personally, you know, as you know, as a black guy, I'm happy that there's somebody who who looks like me, you know. Even though if it's almost like that unspoken, uh, it's almost like an unspoken, unwritten rule. And you know, when when revolutions start, you know, you don't go out gun, you know, you don't start guns blazing. You know, you have to, you have to kind of start in the shadows, kind of like the way I wrote this book. I didn't go out telling everybody, hey, y'all, guess what I'm doing? I'm, you know, guess what I'm doing? Because a lot of people, you know, they'll give you some thumbs up. But, you know, behind the scenes, they're probably talking about, oh, what do you know about talking this? Talking about oh, you, you square know? behind your back. He yeah, don't know that. Yeah, what do you know? What so, do you know? What, what life he been through? Thank you. I believe <laughs> in, uh, I believe in shocking all tactics. Mm. So that's one that's one thing. Uh, that's one thing that you have to do. Look at the uh, look at uh, the uh, the Underground Railroad. You know, these things were these things were done. Uh, these things were done at night, where you can uh, where you can kind of hide behind the scenes, military tactics. You know, and kind of uh, and kind of get out there and go to freedom. You know, like I was watching the episode in the Fresh Prince. Like they used the uh, the Negro spirituals. Uh, they would say, you know. Uh, wade in the water, wade mm -hmm. in the water. So that was like that's almost like cold. Just saying, wait, you know the the enemy's coming, you know. And when we, you know, and when it's time to when it's time to come out, uh, you know, that's when we'll move. So I think we we can definitely move as one. It's not a problem. It's just it is. I think yeah, it is a society problem because it's it's almost like society has uh, put us against each other. You know, you look at tall, dark, and handsome. You look in Hollywood, you think of uh, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, you know, you don't think of uh, almost any more of the uh, Shamar Morris and the, and the Denzel Washington mm -hmm. and, and uh, actors on, on their esteem. You know, to me, that, that's tall, dark and handsome. That's, right. that's what that's supposed to mean. So I think we, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think, uh, I think there's a lot of just hurt out there but see how do we i want to i really want to know how can we fix that as a culture and as a society because i feel like a lot of times especially us as black people we always think like there can't be too many of us at the top we think that way honestly and that's i feel like that's why we're taught to compete with each other instead of helping each other up because society has kind of taught us there can't be there can't be 10 black CEOs in one company. There can't be 10 black managers in one place. Like, it, you, it's not. It's not going to happen. We always talk about how a job needs to meet their quota. Like, oh, it's about two black people here. They're going to need about two more of us, and then they're done. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of like how we're low-key programmed, just because that's what society has taught us. How do we break that? Because I feel like we're... As much as we're getting to more of the melting pot culture that we're supposed to be, we're still far away. How do we fix that? We have to uh, we have to come together as uh, as as black people. We do. Mm -hmm. It's just it's either it, it's you know I'm just 
maybe I'm the first person saying this, but it's 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 now or never, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and we we and what's in the balance is is uh the present and countless generations in the future. You know, we are like always. Uh, think of it like a horror movie. You know, so many things. You know, think of Jason. You know, Friday the Thirteenth, scary guy with the mask. Think of it like that. They've done so many things to this guy, but he keeps coming back, right? Right. So same thing. The same thing with black people. Um, it's almost like uh, being black people. Uh, people. Uh, they almost. It's almost like they, there's almost like a fear in in a sense, and it's almost like in. It's almost like. An uncomfortable feel. Nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about the 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 elephant in the room. Right. You know, it's always like you know. Well, oh, what about Obama? You know, well, he's our first black president. Yeah. And that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's that is that is you know that's nice. That's historic. But if you uh, if it, it's nice to hear him sing a you know sing a song and shoot some basketball. But I mean, heck, I can do that. You know, I can do that on my own. But I think during his presidency, if you didn't use that, it, I think to me it was more about ins, it was more about inspiration, you know? Because absolutely, we, yeah. When we when we look at him, we we hold our heads up high, and we can we, you know we can put our chest out, and we can say like, "Wow, you know, if he did the impossible, then we can do it too." And get my back, president is black. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's like you know, just like uh, just like my black is beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, but. Getting back to uh, getting back to corporate America. I mean, corporate America is basically set up for uh, maybe just like one go one culture, one demographic. So you know, we have to we have to kind of come back, and we have to kind of look at those people who who have gone to who have gone to college and gotten these uh, degrees. They have to work on their level, just like uh, W. E. B. Uh, du Bois said, uh, "The talented tent." Mm -hmm. That's you know that's that's another thing that I believe in. But that talented tent has to believe in uh, the, the talented tent has to believe in the people in the hood. You know these people have a lot of these people have a lot of untapped talent. I'm not saying absolutely. Yeah, I'm yeah. not saying that. You know, I'm not saying uh, is everybody gonna make it? No, that's just the, that's just the truth of it. You know, mm -hmm. but. It's not. Uh, it's, it's it's not a bad thing to just have a regular job and just be able to pay your bills and be the greatest dad, or greatest mom, you know, in the world. Not everybody's gonna be a, a you know Instagram superstar, or NBA or or, or the NFL. Think now, what we need is that we need more doctors, we need more lawyers, we need more uh, we need more we need more geneticists. We need you know we we need that you know like I need uh, I need the strength of my sisters. Mm -hmm. I do. Just like uh, I heard, just like I heard Jill Scott say, you know, like um, we we need, you know, we need your we need you brothers. We need your uh, we need your strength. We need your intensity. We need your uh, we need your backbone. We need you to to have our back. Like me having you, uh, like you have me on your show. Right. You have a friend for life. You know. Right. And you never know. You know. I never. I don't know what you're gonna go to do. And, and vice versa. You yeah, know? so in a nutshell, it's basically we need to stop hating each other for where one may be in their life and support and do what we can to make it that, make it good for all of us. In that's this. true, but, uh -huh. you know, a lot of people are, you know, the movie The Matrix, you know, and, and the one with Keanu Reeves and all that stuff. Everybody, a lot of people are still plugged into The Matrix. Do we have time to sit there and try to uh, save all those people? You know, that's probably impossible. But the ones... Uh, the ones who who we can save can can make a bold statement through social media. Mm -hmm. You know that that's the way we can definitely get the word out now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: Do do you honestly do you feel like the black man is kind of losing itself with everything that you guys are going through in today's society? Police brutality and you know, all this stuff. Is the black man kind of losing itself, like losing its direction? Or do you think all of this is actually making him stronger? They say, uh, you know, just like the police, the police, uh, they live by the gun and they will let you die by the gun. Mm -hmm. So looking at it, looking at it, uh, just speaking of it from, uh, from my soul to other brothers out there, I feel like, uh, 
this is this is a good time in in uh, in evolution. Evolution starts the revolution. Revolution uh, revolution uh, leads to things that will echo through time. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the the scream. Uh, the, uh, I saw a picture of a brother the other day. He was at a Donald Trump rally, and he had a Zulu Warrior shirt on. That spoke. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, you know what? That, that takes some balls and some nuts to, to just go to all of those white folks and to do that. You know, right? And he had this. He had this look on his this this, this look on his his uh, his face of of power and, and of revolution and of uh, and of uh, just of self. And I believe that. Yeah, we we've taken some some tough losses. You don't know what what uh, Trayvon Morton could have grown up to be. You don't know with uh, the uh, the gardeners of the world. Mm-hmm. You know, people who say like, "Hey, I can't breathe." Like if uh, somebody's close too close to you, and if they say, "Hey, get out of my space," can you know they normally back up. But right. This man was just out there trying to sell some cigarettes. Come on now. You yeah. Know? So um, it it. It hurts. It does. It it really does hurt, and you feel for their families more than anything. Absolutely. No, it there. There's always a saying that says, uh, "No parent should ever ha- ever have, have to, to bury, bury their child." child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's where you know that that's where we are now, and it's prayer is strong, but prayer with action is even stronger. So you know we can you know we can start a march and rally and get out there, and people, you know, at the top one percent, they're going to look down and say like. Well, you know, that's that's going to that's going to that's going to die out eventually, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just let them go out there and scream and march and all that stuff like that. But just like uh, Mr. Farrakhan just had a uh, I think it was a, uh, the anniversary of the, the Million Man March. Was it last year? I believe yeah. It was. So mm-hmm. if, if we have in things like that and if nothing if nothing comes from it, then you know what's what's the point yeah of, uh, what are we marching for? yeah what are we marching for you yeah. know so that's why uh it, it can be led through it can be led uh through uh it can be led through uh uh social media but those famous people you know they can't they can't forget you know your your fan base is the people that have to go to these jobs every day and, and you know and in a book I have a, a poem called uh, "Heart of a Champion," and it 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 says something like, uh, "What do you do when you when you're the only one that looks like you, and you walk into the building and you feel the the weight of society just instantly just uh just weighing down on you? What do you do in that situation? You know, like how do you how do you handle it? You know, so it's like the it's like the the older generation." They can't just look at the younger generation, just shake their head and say, oh, well, you know, their pants on the ground and whatever like that. You know, just walk up to them in a respectful way and just kind of pull them to the side and say, hey, young brother, hey, young sister, you know, uh, blase, blase, this, this, this and that. You Absolutely. Know, you can, you know, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can always, you can always learn from the past and you can uh, take the past and, uh, and, and move forward in the future. Just like they said in, in Hidden Colors. What does it what does it matter uh what what does it matter if we uh if we if we knew what we what we did in China like twenty six thousand years ago or even in even in uh even in uh Egypt like uh five thousand years ago. You know, we were kings and queens and we ruled, but nowadays it it is it's just to the point where we're like kind of like at the at the bottom and we have to crawl our way up. You know, I can I can get on the show and 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 scream to the high heavens, you know, like support black business, support my book, uh uh watch this show. But if those actions aren't behind it, you know, that's cool to go and support uh Michael Jordan. You know Michael Jordan is a you know Michael Jordan is a billionaire. Nike is a billion dollar corporation. You know, we uh I would I would rather uh, I would rather support a young brother or sister that has uh, shoes that are just coming out, you and, know? Yeah, then go buy those Jordans that you already yeah, know. Thank thousands you. Thousands of people yeah. come by. Jordans yeah. made in China for like maybe like, what, two, three dollars, mm-hmm. you know? And and they and they mark up the price. Now, if you're a shoe collector, that's a different topic, you right. know? But um, we got to make sure that we're out there supporting the people who 
merely just have a dream, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's not a Michael Jordan. Like you said that that young brother who's out there who made a shoe on his own, you know, we walk past those people and kind of just ignore it. But it's just like that's us pouring our devotion and our time into the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you want to, you know, if if young ladies want to go out there and get a, a, a a Michael Kors bag based on what Nicki Minaj is, is talking about. But ask Nicki Minaj how much uh, how, how, how much of a percentage she owns in that company. And mm. she'll probably say zero. But, you know, they might have, you know, half the time these rappers are, are giving uh, uh, corporate America uh, free publicity. Exactly. In a sense, you know. Yeah. Like, are they doing that for You're us? right, because no, I didn't know well, who, but who was a Michael, who was a core. I did not know who that was until Nicki Minaj mentioned that in the song. And all of a sudden, Michael Kors became hot. Based off, yeah, no, based off. And Nicki off, Minaj tried not getting two cents of a Michael Kors bag. And thank you. And probably don't, <laughs> and probably don't ever have two cents to even and know she what she's And she probably only got about. two Michael Kors bags. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. It just rhymed in the song. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so what is, what is, as time winds out, I really want to talk about your favorite chapter or portion in your book, Soul of a Man. What, what's your favorite chapter? My, uh, my favorite chapter, uh, see, I have one poem. I think I, I love, I love Heart of a Champion. I love, uh, I have a lot of, I love the whole book mm-hmm. and, and within itself. I love, uh, uh, the name of the poem was Tears from Heaven, where, uh, where we were talking about the young lady with the abortion situation. Mm-hmm. I have one, I have one called uh, Wedding Day that uh, that talks about you know walking down the aisle, uh, saying I do to that person that you're gonna love uh, through uh, sickness and health, through death, through you part, mm-hmm. you know, under uh, under God's eyes. Mm-hmm. So I have one called I do. Now this poem I really 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 love. It talks about like. Talks about uh, white flowers falling down from the Eiffel Tower. It talks about. Uh, oh, you get real yeah, deep. This is not about, for the weak minded. That's nah, what he was trying nah, to let yeah, y'all it, know. It talks about. Uh, it talks about. Uh, what if you know? How, what if I could be your? Uh, what if I could be your your uh, your McKnight like Brian? You know mm, something? Yeah. So you. It, I it like go, that. Yeah. So it goes. Uh, it goes in depth into. Uh, Setting up the, the the perfect day so you can get to that way. So like I do is like the precursor to uh, to wedding day. Right. So the book doesn't. It's not a book that you just read from start to finish and it flows like a story. It's merely just a book that comes from a lot of different viewpoints that yeah. you just kind of read. Yeah. It it comes from it it comes from like I said it comes from the 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 depths of of uh, my soul for me writing for almost like you know. Uh, 15 19 years now you mm-hmm. know just being so just being so uh creative minded just being put into different situations watching so many different tv shows being inspired you're just giving uh, your perspective on certain situations yeah in, just, a, in a creative in a, way. yeah in a poetic in a poetic sense oh, yeah, in a poetic i like sense. that sometimes you know you need those escapes from those you know sultry sexy books that we tend to read just to get our mind off stuff to yeah. something a little bit more intellectual and yeah i think the the sexy book uh, now that one will be coming like right after this Uh-oh. one i'll be he yeah got his, he got his that name one, coming yeah, for us yeah now that, now that one yeah and that one will be coming yeah that one will be coming like right that one will be coming like right after this one. okay so. okay so where can we purchase soul of a man where can we find it where can we read it where can we start a book club where give us all that info all right. Uh, the website is actually uh, Demond. My name uh, spelled D-E-M-O-N-D one two nine dot wix dot com. Again, that's Demond one two nine dot wix dot com. You can also find me on Instagram. Uh, I'm on Instagram Soul of a Man five zero four. That again, that is Soul of a Man five zero four. And uh, you can also find me. A lot of my stuff will come up on Facebook. If you just put in a hashtag, uh, hashtag uh, soul of a man, and uh, my my page will pop up, uh, Demond L, and a lot of uh, a direct link to my uh, to my website will pop up also. Y'all heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. If you are interested in Soul of a Man, he gave you all the info where we can find it, read it. It's a good book. I've read, I've read actually two poems of it, and it's hot. I'm not even gonna lie. It's very intellectual. It makes you think about things in a certain way that you wouldn't normally think about it. The imagery that he uses is phenomenal. Demise, it's a hot book. 
It's a hot book. Well, thank you. Yeah, this, this book, I think I've been working on it probably since uh, 2008. Yes, I dragged my feet. But, hey, I, you know what? <laughs> you got it done. Yeah, That's I all. Got, like, yeah, just we like talked my, about that all day today. As long as you get it done. Yeah, it's all, you know what? And, you know, in closing retrospect, I think it's really nowadays it's, it's, it's really – it's all it's 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 all about the uh it's it's really uh all about the action i think it's really all about uh being being yourself you mm-hmm. know just like if uh a guy saw you somewhere right and mm-hmm. if he was trying to if he was trying to uh you know walk up to you and approach you like women can spot that women can women are like bloodhounds y'all can spot that you know just feel that fear from like 10 miles away i'm glad so, you know yes yes we i can. do yes i learned that through <laughs> yes i learned that through trial and error folks <laughs> so this uh you know so this this book is actually you know soul of a man this book is actually this actually speaks about the the realness of me and it you know it taught it, it touches so many different topics uh self-esteem love uh relationships uh you get something about black history so you know you can learn it like you said uh like i think we were talking off air it's it's a it's a deep collaboration of of the soul Mm -hmm. because the soul can the soul can go through uh so many different things like the soul can actually uh, also give you warning signs to situations yeah if you're not in if you're not tapped into your soul then you i don't know what you're doing and it's a process exactly yeah, if you, I think if you are, uh, and and I, I I say that it's a poetry for the mind, body, and soul. Those three things are linked, and if you can link those three things together, it is called winning, folks. And that and that's exactly and that's what, what we want to do. In 2016, it's all about the hashtag winning. Yep, hashtag winning, hashtag <laughs> soul of a man on Facebook. So that's what we want to do. Just like you want, you know, you want people to watch your show. You mm-hmm. know, you want to have a. You want to have the, the, the hottest guests and you want to have the hottest topics and all of that. Different right. Stuff. So, you know, it's about uh, it's about winning. It's about the now and people. It's about not thinking about it. Uh, it's just about just really going out there and, and just doing it. You know, hmm. this 2016, 2016 is that year. It's uh, we're with, you know, early, uh, early March. So, you know, get up, get out and get something. Seriously. Get up, get out, and get something. Yes. Yeah, I heard it here first. Damon has told you. I want to thank you for coming in the chat room and hey. chatting with me. Hey, no problem. We thank touched you for on a lot me. of we touched on a lot of things. I hope y'all kind of got something out of it because this wasn't no lighthearted show. We hit it hard. Yeah. So we yeah, hit it hard. My mind is my mind is always thinking. My right. mind is always, <laughs> always going. So you, I could, you know, I, could, I love I love the art. I, I, one last thing I like to touch upon the the, the art form of conversation, which mm-hmm. I think it's a lost art. You know, I, I heard I heard a rap song. Somebody goes down in the DM or something like that. Oh Lord, I yeah, hate I don't, that song. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not on Twitter, so I don't. You know, I didn't know what the DM was until I heard that song. <laughs> I, I know what the Facebook inbox is, but I think Instagram got a DM too, though. Kind of like the private message and oh, okay, 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 it, okay. yeah, okay. teaches them. Yeah, so um, I think that yeah, but uh, just you know, use uh, use social media as your platforms. You know, don't don't have. Uh, don't have any fear. Uh, a good friend of mine touched me upon a movie called uh, Creed. Creed was uh, Creed was the son of Rocky. Oh you know? yeah, my husband Michael B. Jordan started <laughs> that movie. If you guys didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one thing, uh, one thing the old Rocky Balboa told him was that uh, when you're in the ring or in life, it's that it's uh, it's one it's uh, one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time. So you have to. You got to put these things together. And as soon as you hear that, as soon as you hear that bell ring in life, you got to come out swinging. Come out swinging. That's what it is. 2016. I hope y'all up. It, like mine said, it is early March. It's not too late to get up and do something. Yeah, it's never Please too late. Just like it's never it too is. late yeah, to just win. like it, it's, it's not too late to watch uh, the beautiful Miss Chloe show. Yeah. It, it is not too late it to is. go ahead and get yourself a copy <laughs> Soul of a Man. Just $15, folks. It's not, just it is, $15. Just $15. That is a meal. Y'all is better it? sacrifice and support y'all black businesses. Thank That's you. all I'm saying. Thank you. That's all I'm saying is support. We try. I'm telling y'all. You know, so I think sometimes black folks have a tendency to jump on it. You know, like once it's hot, once it's hot, we can do that. Yeah, let's be, yeah, let's be, yeah, let's be trendsetters now and Mm. say like, 
Oh man, I remember when this dude was on uh uh man Chloe show. Right. He was talking about his first book. Man, look what he's doing now. So you know, you never know what's gonna happen in a few months, a Absolutely. year, or whatever, whatever, whatever. So Absolutely. Let's make it happen, folks. Last man get hot. Absolutely. And y'all know where y'all can hear this show. Again, it will be on the website, the chatroomradio.com. Go in there now. I mean, the show is over, but talk to us. Me and Damon will be monitoring y'all tweets and Instagram posts and what you put us on the website. Talk to us. Chat with us about what we talked about today. If you have any viewpoints, I'm always on there checking it. Um, once again, the chat chat the dot chat dot room on Instagram, and you can also follow me on my personal Instagram, Miss Chloe Chantel. And Damon, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. Hey. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem at all. Thank you, my beautiful sister. Hey, <laughs> and we will. We'll be back next week, 8 p.m. with another hot show. And I'm gonna see y'all next week. We got the bass dropping and the throat crunk up. So you know what's up. It's time to bring the booty.